Here's a text, and this is more like it. Old enough to remember the 71 Orioles. This Pirates team has the potential over the next three years to do the same if we can start hitting. Talent is there. It needs to be managed correctly. I-M-H-O. That Orioles team had four 20-game winners. Look it. Jared Jones is a top 10 prospect in all of baseball now. He is one of the three front runners to win the NL Rookie of the Year. And he's not even the best pitching prospect on this team. That's obviously Paul Skeens. The likes of which we have not seen since Steven Strasburg. People need to understand that this is not Chris Benson. This is not Chad Hermanson. This is not Daniel Moskis. This is not even Henry Davis when there were other options on the table. This is not Pedro Alvarez even. This is not, I mean, the list goes on on Gregory Polanco where you're guessing, you're hoping, it's all based on talent. There's a track record here for Paul Skeens that you haven't seen. We watched him in the College World Series. He was unbelievable all year long. We saw what he did in AAA. It's not like you're saying, oh, his talent should translate to the big league level. Like, oh, he's got some things to work on. The numbers aren't great in AAA, but he's a project. We project. No, it's not like that. When you're talking about a once in a generation, or I guess in this case, twice in a generation kind of prospect, the expectations should be hyperbolic. Mm -hmm. Like we can talk about this guy in the way that I think Colts fans were probably talking about Andrew Luck. You know, the way the Bears fans right now might be talking about Caleb Williams, and I think Caleb Williams is more of a question mark than a guy like Paul Skeen's story. Like, there were questions about whether or not he should be the number one pick, and you can say the same things about Skeen's, but there was not a pitcher who was looked at that way. It was either, do you prefer the position player or do you prefer the pitcher? But the question was never, can this guy do it? The answer is, yeah, he can do it. Mm Mm-hmm. So when I look at Garrett Cole and he came up and had an ERA of 3-2-2, I think Paul Skeen should be better than that. And that's the subject of our Twitter poll. Will he have an ERA higher or lower than Garrett Cole's? Right now, 54% of people are saying lower. Jack that up. Jack that up. Garrett Cole was not this good. He wasn't. And even back then, man, he had a 3-2-2 ERA and he was being coached pitch to contact. I think they're going to let Skeens be Skeens. And I, I think that's so. important. That's very important. I, I sure hope so. Why would you tinker with that? Why would you mess with it? I mean, you, you just you got to let him go out there and be himself. I mean, that's why he's as good as he is, is because he just knows himself and he does pitch hard. Like, I, I just, my question is, is what took him so long to become a pitcher? Ha! Huh. Like, he was a catcher. Two years ago, I don't know that he even thinks about himself as the next Steven Strasburg. No. He was at Air Force. How does how do he you was fi- hitting home runs? How do you find that out? Like, wh- like, well, he was pitching at Air Force, and then he goes to LSU as this transfer, and he was a big time transfer, but he pitched better at LSU than he did at Air Force. And we're talking about SEC competition. Uh, what took him from a guy to the guy? <laughs> Good question. You know, what I'm saying like mm-hmm. I'm like how, I mean what I. I'm probably putting you guys on the spot, but, like, what what did he do more at Air Force, catching or pitching? He was doing both. I mean, he was doing both regularly, and he was elite at both. <laughs> and I'm happy he stopped doing the hitting thing. What, what was he hitting? Do you remember? He hit, I think, 18 home runs <laughs> in a season for Air Force. He's <laughs> a freak. He's a freak of nature, man. And not only he looks the part, I think 25% of all the pitches he threw at AAA were 100 miles an hour. See, this is why I say his acumen, I think, is being overlooked a little bit. Like being able to hit and understanding the batter's box, understanding the plate, and then being behind the plate and understanding what the catchers are thinking. Like that is huge. Mm-hmm. That's just that, – that, that escalates and expedites your process uh, in the major leagues. I mean, and then you are you – know, and then you're a specimen. So, like, not only are you a freak of nature that can throw hard – but your acumen of baseball is just through the roof. And I'm that, with that's, you. that's just that that's where I think that he is going to be immediately on on the on the production page. You can't get by to your point on just having stuff. No. I mean, think about Tyler Glass now. You can't get by on just being able to throw hard and having dev- devastating stuff. You need to know how to pitch. Jared Jones doesn't walk anybody. He trusts his stuff and they've allowed him to be him. 
hey, you, you throw 100, you throw 98 with movement, do it, do it, just keep doing it, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> They're going to do the same thing with Paul Skeens, I think. And, again, that is another thing to look at in the Pirates organization and say I, it looks at least to this point that they've let they've they've changed their stripes a little bit. You know, Luis Ortiz was throwing hard, then all of a sudden he wasn't. Now he's in your bullpen. Uh, same deal with Ronzi Contreras. You wondered about Quinn Priester last year, and I know he didn't pitch well his last time out, but he does look like a different guy. You know, I think they were trying to do the one size fits all kind of philosophy deal, and they're just letting these unicorns be unicorns. These guys are very good. 